Hey guys, welcome to my channel. And today's video is going to be a technical review and tear down of the K-Line Technologies Pressure Point Base Compressor Pedal. This is a pedal that I purchased on my own and I'm going to be adding to my Affordaboard, board which is basically a combination of various Azure and K-Line pedals. Actually, Azure is made by K-Line and keeping it as a mini pedal board for the smaller venues that I, I wind up playing. So I've already started tearing down the pedal a little bit. We're going to take a look at the board here and see what the construction is like. But the interesting thing and the treat that I have for everyone is I will go into some detail on the schematic that I got from K-Line Technologies for this pedal. And a little bit about the pedal. The pedal is actually designed by an engineer based over in Japan and K-Line is over in China. And this is a, this is kind of an interesting pedal. A lot of people don't seem to know what some of the controls do, and I'm in that boat. But with the schematic, I should be able to kind of discern what's going on with the pedal here. It is a compressor, and what a lot of people don't realize is that it is an optical compressor. And I'll show you. Let's take a look at the board, and I'll show you. Here's the inside of the board, and right off the bat, I know that this is an optical compressor circuit. This component right here is the optocoupler. One side is an LED and the other side is a photoresistor. And basically how they work is depending on how bright that LED shines on that photoresistor device, it will determine how much the photoresistor will conduct current and tell this circuit to reduce the gain from the input that's going to happen on the output. It call, it's called the side chain, basically. There's another circuit that sits on basically the side of your input and output, and depending on what you have these potentiometers set to is going to determine how much gain reduction or compression happens within the circuit. A little history on this pedal from what I was able to read from the various reviews and the videos is that this had an issue with some noise and bad humming and some of the early ones had some problems and I think it had to do with the power supply circuitry because on the schematic here it actually shows a more complex power supply schematic and that is not present on this most recent version the 3.1 if anything they've simplified it to a point where it's just a straight 9 volts coming in with some reverse polarity protection that's powering the chips. This is actually a pretty quiet pedal and it runs great on a daisy chain power supply with all the other pedals that I have here and I haven't run into any issues with that. Now the one thing that is still present which is not a big deal is that this foot switch you really have to it's, you need a lot of force to push that foot, foot switch in, but what it causes is a loud popping noise or a clicking noise on the audio lines. And I don't believe that is an issue or a fault of the circuit design. The, this particular foot switch, it's pretty hard to actually engage. And, what that, and that's usually the, the cause of any kind of switching noise because the contacts inside, even though you're pushing on it, and you hear it click and it's a very solid engaging switch, those switch contacts are actually bouncing in microseconds. So that bouncing that's on and off, on and off, it can actually be translated into the audio lines as a pop. If you were to change out this foot switch to a, a soft touch switch, and I, I'll see if I can find one, but you can actually fix that. That's where the clicking sound is coming from. It is not coming from the circuit inside the pedal. And the reason I know that it's not coming from the circuit in the pedal, because if we look here, here is your input. And if you look at the first capacitor here, it's got a bleed resistor. And a lot of times the other source of clicking and popping in the pedal is because there's built up DC charge on the audio lines. And those bleeder resistors are what remove that. And here is the output side. And you can see there's R7, which removes any DC on the other side of that capacitor C4. In the next segment, I'm going to go into some technical detail of what each of these controls do. And I do apologize. I know that may not be comfortable for most people, but I will sum up my thoughts here in the end of the video. So if you want to skip to that, uh, you can go to this uh, point right here in the video. I'm going to get a little technical here. Basically, what we're looking at on the side chain is we have a peak detection circuit here. We have two inverting amplifiers. We have a series, a set of series diodes going one way and set of series diodes going for the other for the positive and negative of the waveform. 
goes to this buffered stage, and then it goes to the first uh, compressor limiter stage, which is where you have your attack potentiometer. It'll then feed into the second limiter compressor stage, which has the control circuit here, which the sense potentiometer is located, and then it'll go to the LED inside the optocoupler back up uh, to before the pre-gain stage. So it looks like we have two compressor limiter stages in series, and the their naming convention is not very, I would, I would say it's a little confusing for those that are a little bit more advanced when it comes to setting their pedals, but uh, compression is the overall volume, and then these are the volumes for the individual stages, so the first stage and the second stage. Attack and sense, you know, my technical mind doesn't really agree with that naming convention, but I understand what it's doing now. And the attack and the sense, so the attack is more of a hard limiter, and the sense is more of a uh, soft limiter, basically. And the attack and the release, now I did look at the capacitor and resistor combinations. Attack and release are two other settings that you would normally be able to adjust on some compressors, not on this one, but they are preset to about 10 milliseconds for the attack and then 100 milliseconds for the release. And knowing that now, now it makes sense why some people have said that this is not really a squishy sounding pedal, like say the MXR or uh, some of the other different brands of pedals, because since you can't adjust those, they're already preset inside the pedal itself. That could be the reason why you're getting that feedback from the customers where, oh, it's not, you don't really have some heavy compression where it brings that gain down almost to nothing uh, when you're really uh, hitting your strings hard. So not the end of the world, but hey, you know, for, this is a pretty decent circuit. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And, you know, it's a compressor that's under $100 and it does the job. To sum up my final thoughts on this pedal, as a bass player, I think this pedal does the job well, considering the price point that it's sold at. I would like to see a different nomenclature other than attack and sense, because I don't think those are very accurate on what those knobs are actually doing. We know that there are two compressor limiter stages in series, and this is the overall uh, effect volume. If I was to set this, I would set it all the way up to 12 o'clock for the compression, Attack would probably be somewhere between 11 and 1 o'clock, and then sense would be all the way up. The attack knob is a hard limiter. It's a very high ratio. I'd say 15 to 1 or 20 to 1, pretty high. And that's going to take care of all your peaks so you don't clip. And then your sense is more of a normal compression stage, limiter stage, say 4 to 1 or 5 to 1. And that's where most bass players are going to be using that uh, compression level. So I would keep that up all the way. Your volume and gain knobs, they're, uh, you know, you set those to taste. I really can't make any complaints about that. Uh, on the more advanced compressors, you would probably have what's called makeup gain, where this volume knob can have a hell of a lot more gain than what's coming in, because if you're compressing, you're going to lose some dynamics and you're going to want to bring the overall overall level back up to make up for that basically. You really can't do that with this pedal, but the compression and the attack and release metrics on this pedal, I don't think uh, you would really need that much makeup gain anyway. So it does well for what it's designed for. I really have no major complaints on it. Now you could, if you wanted to get rid of that popping sound, it's from the switch, it's not from the circuit. You can get a soft touch button here. I'll see if I can find one and put it in the description below. But this pedal is likely going to always be on or it's going to be off. And I think, uh, you know, this, I, I like the color actually. I'm really liking the blue. And hey, you know, the pressure point, you got a crab. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a pretty cool pedal. I really got to, I really got to give props for K-Line. You know, it's, it's built to a price point And I think that it does well for what it is intended for. So if there's any other questions, please let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, cheers.